Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another really intriguing, somewhat mysterious discovery from right here in the solar system, related to this somewhat unusual rock you see right in front of you. An object known as Quawar, discovered back in early 2000s, and the object that some scientists originally referred to as Planet X, the hypothetical 10th planet in the solar system, and it's actually the discovery of Quawar that eventually led to the demotion of Pluto as a planet. Mostly because so many more similar objects were discovered afterwards. And even though Quawar by itself already has so many different properties that are kind of difficult to explain, extremely recently the scientists discovered something else that they currently cannot explain. And you can obviously see it in this image. They discovered a set of rings in the location where we don't really believe this should be possible. I guess the impossible rings. But I guess more importantly, this officially now makes Quawar the third small sized object in the solar system to contain relatively large rings for one reason or another. And the other object we've actually discussed relatively recently in the video you can find in the description because the James Webb Space Telescope was recently able to observe these rings once again. Here I'm referring to the object known as Chariklo that contains two sets of rings orbiting very close to one another, with no official explanation for why this exists but we've discussed this in some of the previous videos in the description. With the third object being Haumea, another unusual dwarf planet that seems to spin really fast, which resulted in its unusual egg shape. And one of the videos from a few months ago explains some of the recent discoveries from this object as well, once again in the description. But unlike those two other objects, the rings of Quawar are in a very peculiar location. Now let me explain why. Or actually to try to understand this, let me explain what Quawar is first. Now first, just like Haumea, it's believed to be some kind of a oblate spheroid. It's spherical because it has quite a lot of mass to assume a spherical shape, but not massive enough to be spherical like planet Earth. And because it spins, it assumes a kind of a oblate shape. Not as oblate as you see here, but definitely more squished than a typical ball. Here's roughly how it compares to a lot of other previously discovered objects, including Pluto, and of course planet Earth and the Moon. It's about 1100 kilometers in diameter, but it's definitely smaller than Haumea, smaller than Eris and Makemake, and about half the size of Pluto. It's actually even smaller than Charon. And intriguingly, the discoveries from its surface suggested that it seems to contain certain deposits of crystalline ice, implying that the temperature on the surface might have been much warmer previously, at least for a few million years. Although here, warmer is a relative term. It was still very likely minus 160 degrees Celsius, but definitely warmer than the current temperature of minus 230 Celsius. In other words, the surface here might have gone through certain changes because of, I guess, the climate change, for one reason or another. It's possible that this was due to collisions with other objects, or possibly due to some other event we can't really understand just yet. Intriguingly, somewhere on the surface, at least 5% of everything seems to be crystallized methane and ethane. Once again, suggesting that something must have changed the surface in the past, with certain ices potentially even creating some kind of a very minute atmosphere. As a matter of fact, if you were to stand on the surface here, it's quite possible that there would be just a tiny tiny bit of atmosphere potentially containing methane and other volatiles. It would be extremely extremely thin, maybe about one microbar, very very small compared to even Mars, but whatever was here was probably a result of sublimation of various ices on the surface, although mostly methane ice. Although at the moment, no signs of this atmosphere have been discovered so far, and so it's mostly just theoretical based on observations from objects like Titan, which by the way has an extremely thick atmosphere in comparison, but very similar conditions otherwise. It's also surprisingly not very reflective, actually it's kind of dark. The albedo or reflectivity is only about 0.1, which basically suggests that it sort of lost a lot of its fresh ice through some kind of a process we still don't understand. But a lot of these effects could in theory be explained by the presence of its moon. It does have a smaller moon, approximately 160 kilometers in diameter, with the proper name Weiwat. And so it's possible that as the moon orbits around Quawar, it might actually create various effects, including tidal effects, which could maybe explain some of these observations. Here's actually a pretty good representation of what it might resemble, considering the presence of darker materials and considering the presence of ices on the surface. But because this object orbits way past the orbit of Neptune, it's always been kind of difficult to discover new things about it. And so to make this new discovery, the scientists had to observe this object as it passed against the backdrop of various very bright stars for approximately three years. 
and all this was done using extremely accurate data from ESA's Cheops telescope, responsible for looking at various stars as it tries to find various exoplanets in orbit of those stars. But some of those stars were briefly covered by this object, which allowed the scientists to actually see what's happening around Quawar as well. And by observing extremely specific changes in brightness as Quawar passed in front of those stars, and by essentially modeling what was happening around Quawar in order to produce these observations, the scientists concluded that this was very likely, almost certainly, rings. But in this case, rings we've never seen before. Because as you might see in this image, they're sort of beyond where we expect rings to form. And this is related to the concept known as the Roche limit. The idea that directly relates to various gravitational effects between the main body and all of the moons or various objects orbiting around it. And this image from Neptune kind of helps us understand it much easier. If an object is below the Roche limit, the gravity from Neptune here would actually rip this object apart, turning it into rings. Here's a rough illustration showing this limit as a kind of an image. Now anything beyond this limit will not be receiving as many tidal effects and will still maintain its shape and can definitely still remain as a moon. But anything inside the limit falls apart pretty quickly and becomes some kind of a ring or even falls into the object itself, with pretty much all of the rings in the solar system explained in this way. And all massive objects have this limit, although it also depends on other properties such as the density of the moon itself. But for, for example, Earth-Moon system, this limit is at 20,000 kilometers, much, much closer than the geostationary orbit, but way above all of the other satellites. So if by some chance Moon came that close, it would also fall apart, turning into rings. And for Neptune, well, you can pretty much see where this limit is as well. For all gas giants, this limit can be seen visually by observing where the rings are located. However, some rings, such as the Saturn's F ring, have been created for other reasons, such as collisions. And some other rings, like the E-ring of Saturn, can even be created by an object emitting something around the planet through various internal processes. And in this case, this is the E-ring created by various geysers on the surface of Enceladus. And so not all rings are created equal. But nevertheless, pretty much all of the rings here are at their Roche limit, depending on the density of the material. So basically, you'll find much denser materials much closer to Saturn, and then you'll find much lighter material farther away with a lot of ices being at the furthest from Saturn. Yet they're still usually at that Roche limit. Anything past the limit should coalesce into larger objects and create miniature moons. As a matter of fact, Saturn has quite a lot of these in between rings as well. But when trying to calculate the Roche limit for Quawar, the scientists discovered that it's approximately 2.4 times the radius of the object itself. Or basically, if there are any rings, they should be about 1300 kilometers away from the surface. So I guess somewhere right here. Yet the rings that were discovered were approximately 7.2 times the radius of Quar, or about 4,000 kilometers away from the surface. And it's extremely unlikely for rings to exist in this region unless they have a very unusual formation history. And more intriguingly, they also discovered that these rings do not have the same thickness. In some locations, they're only 5 kilometers across, but in some other locations, they are over 100 kilometers basically shrinking and thickening for some unknown reasons. And so what exactly is happening to these rings and why exactly are they doing this or how can they exist so far away from this object? Well, it is possible that maybe something is actually orbiting here, kind of like Enceladus, and is producing these rings in a similar way. But the more likely answer is the gravitational interaction between Quawar, its moon Weiwat, and the rings themselves. They do seem to have a gravitational resonance, and to be more exact, the inner ring here completes six orbits for every orbit of Weiwat, whereas the outermost part of the ring completes one orbit every time Quawar rotates three times. So there's a very complex mean motion orbital resonance, which could explain what's happening here to some extent. But once again, at the moment, it's not entirely clear. Or it's also possible that maybe the relatively old Roche limit needs to be reworked. It was originally proposed back in 1848, so maybe recalculation of the Roche limit would actually explain this even more. So basically at the moment it's a bit of a mystery and nobody really has the exact answer. And because Roche limit is generally only a guide and is not an exact scientific model, the discovery right here might help us understand this even better. And so the biggest mystery here is that, well, it should be some kind of a miniature moon, but it's not one. And exactly where this ring came from is also not very clear. So, definitely a pretty exciting new discovery from this already exciting and unusual object. But we're unlikely to know anything else until future observations. 
And so until those observations, maybe by James Webb Telescope, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful perfume t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.